Hi everybody, my name is Mike Miller and today I'm going to be discussing the taste receptors, the sweet taste receptors, and the miracle berry and the interesting effects it can have on taste. Alright, so first I'm going to talk about our learning objectives that we're going to complete today. So the first one is going to be um, understanding the physiology of taste receptors, learning how we can taste sweetness and perceive that in the brain, and then lastly recognize the effects and impacts that the miracle berry and specifically that active molecule miraculin can have. Alright, so first I'm going to be discussing what a taste receptor is. So a taste receptor is a channel that is located on papillae. Papillae aid in the facilitation of the taste sensation. Typically, a majority of these papillae are located in the oral cavity. However, they can also be found in other areas of the body, including the GI tract and hypothalamus. I'm sure you have all recognized by now that you know when food enters the mouth, molecules from the food interact with saliva and bind to taste receptors, which activates a taste sensation. Molecules that cause taste sensations are called sapid molecules. Previous research has recognized a total of five different taste sensations that the human body can experience. These include salty, sweet, bitter, sour, and umami. Umami is known to be the taste associated with savory foods such as broths and meats. Uh, there are two possible ways that taste can be detected in the human body. Salty and sour taste sensations are detected by ion channels, and the sweet, bitter, and umami taste sensations are detected by G-protein coupled receptors. And down here you can see where all of those taste sensations are typically occurring on the tongue. And you can notice here the sweet taste sensation is located more towards the front. However, there are some receptors along the side as well of the tongue. Alright, so we completed our first learning objective and understand how the physiology of taste receptors. And now we're going to dive into how one can taste from this point forward, I am going to be specifically discussing the sweet taste receptor and go more in depth behind the physiology of its mechanical functions. The sweet taste receptor is composed of a heterodimer of T1R2 and T1R3 receptors. That stands for taste 1, receptor 2, and taste 1, receptor 3. These are ubiquitous throughout the human body, meaning that they can be found nearly everywhere. These receptors are involved in nutrient sensing, monitoring energy stores, and triggering metabolic responses to maintain energy balance. Therefore, it's easy to recognize the important impacts it can have on overall health of the human body. On the right side of the screen here, I have incorporated a diagram of the sweet taste bud receptor anatomy. As you can see, we have the overall taste bud in yellow, and then the taste pores located at the top, that little divot there, in the taste bud and that's where those sugar molecules flow into and that's where we're going to see a lot of that reaction for the sweet taste receptor. So step one is initiated when sugar molecules bind to the G protein coupled receptors located at the top of the taste bud which activates receptor potential and allows an influx of ions. So you can see here over on the right hand side of the screen that sugar molecule coming into that taste pore and it's going to bind to that G protein coupled receptor. This diagram says these are ion channels but they are the G protein coupled receptors and as soon as that sugar molecule binds that's going to activate the influx of ions to flow in to the sensory receptor cell. So as soon as that ion flows into the sensory receptor cell those neurotransmitter molecules are going to be released and going to interact with a sensory neuron, which is then going to create a synapse response that will occur, causing an action potential, which is registered in the brain. Here you can see the action potential fluctuate much more when the sugar molecules are present, causing the brain to receive these impulses as a sensation of sweetness. Okay, so now we have officially learned how we can taste sweetness, and now we're going to recognize the effects and impacts that the miracle berry, and specifically the active molecule miraculin, can have. The miracle berry is a taste-altering berry that can physiologically change the way you sense taste for a short period of time. The miracle berry contains a molecule called miraculin. 
and that molecule binds to the sweet taste receptor. Miraculin acts as an agonist in low pH or acidic environments. This means if you were to consume the Miracle Berry, anything that is sour, a lemon wedge for example, would now taste sweet like candy. However, miraculin acts as an antagonist in neutral pH environments. A cookie or wafer typically, something that's normally sweet, will lose its sweet taste entirely and taste boring and bland like cardboard as most people perceive it. A way I like to remember how it acts in which environment is I know a neutral pH has the N there and antagonist has an N in there as well, just for a little tip to remember it come exam time. Now I'm going to elaborate on the biochemistry behind miraculin and the physiological impacts that it has. So miraculin is a glycoprotein. And as you can see here on the right hand side of the screen, normally when a sweetener or sugar comes in contact to the sweet taste receptor, that's going to have an activation and your brain will perceive that sweet taste. But as soon as that active molecule miraculin is on that G protein coupled receptor, sweeteners in a neutral pH environment are no longer going to have an effect and it's going to have a really, really low activation here. And that's going to act as an antagonist. On the other hand, when the miraculin is on the sweet taste receptor and an acidic environment occurs, um, or something with a low pH such as that lemon, that is then going to activate those sweet taste receptors and the brain will perceive that sweet taste. So one thing I also want to touch on here is that miraculin does not alter the sour taste buds, however, only the sweet. So one question to ask yourself is why when we have that miraculin on our tongue and we eat a lemon wedge, why aren't those sour taste buds still responding and you're only tasting that sweetness? You know, does miraculin bind to them too? Uh, it's just a weird phenomenon that researchers have still yet to be able to discover. Um, and it's still unsolved and demonstrates really the psychophysical nature of the human senses by highlighting how sensation can be altered without modifying the normal function of the sour taste receptors. Now that we understand the way the Miracle Berry works, let's apply it to some practical uses that can be seen across the world. So some West African natives chewed the Miracle Berry prior to food consumption, and this would make some acidic foods that were typically overly sour more palatable. So, you know, that can be really helpful with increased consumption of fermented foods, which are have a long shelf life and could aid in food sustainability. And overall, fermented foods can be very beneficial to, you know, your overall microbiota and your intestinal flora and help the health of your gut microbiome and digestive system while also enhancing your immune system. Researchers have also identified another practical use for parents to give the Miracle Berry to their kids, and this may, you know, increase the palatability of some healthy foods that the kids typically aren't fond of, and it may also help mitigate the unpleasantness of some medications that may be required. Okay, so now we have successfully learned and completed all of our objectives here. So we understand the physiology of taste receptors and that sweet one specifically. We've learned how we can taste sweetness, and then we've also recognized the effects and impacts that the Miracle Berry can have. Okay, so moving on to today's lab, we will be testing out the personal effects of the Miracle Berry. So first, we're going to have you try the presented sour and sweet foods before eating a Miracle Berry. And we're going to have you write down your observations that you have. So, you know, was the sweet food sweet? Was the sour food sour? Um, and now it's going to be your turn to then try the Miracle Berry after doing that. And when you do try the Miracle Berry, be sure to let it sit on your tongue and move it around to cover as much surface area as possible until it is completely dissolved. If you chew or swallow it right away, it may not work as well for you because that miraculin may not have enough time to get on all of your sweet taste receptors. So be sure to move it around and let it dissolve completely. After that, we're going to then have you try those sour and sweet foods again 
after eating the miracle berry and we're going to have you write down your new observations and we're going to compare the differences as a class so you know did the sour food still taste sour was the sweet food still sweet and we're going to discuss it as a class and come up with some overall results so thank you guys for watching that's the end of my presentation and i hope you guys have fun with this lab